Hi everyone, welcome to Application Quick Tips and Tricks. This is a continuation on from the Getting Started session. So if you haven't watched that one yet, please be sure to do so. I'm starting off on my deal screen. Okay, uh, the Getting Started session ends with telling you how to get here. So you'll see right from the get-go that it is quite different probably than what you're used to looking at. This is our modern deal screen. Uh, we give you the choice though, however, you choose how you want to view it. You can choose between the modern view, which is what you see here, and the classic view. The classic view, I can just take one click here to switch over, and you'll see as a load that it looks a lot like expert, so a lot like probably what you're used to looking at. So nothing too intimidating or out of the ordinary. And these are for brokers who are, you know, super used to doing things one way. Um, so feel free to use this view if this is what you're really comfortable with. But I do. Uh, encourage you to at least give the modern view a chance um, because I think that you will prefer it. I find most people do. And I'll point out now just a couple of things that make it different, in my opinion, better. So first off, it's customizable. You can choose the order that these categories show up in and you can choose if they're automatically opened or closed, which um, can make for easier scrolling. You always have agent, status, closing date, and conditions date up here um, at the top, which I can use and just click to change at any point. I have my GDS, TDS up here, and they're color-coded, so green um, until they get to a certain amount, then they'll turn red. And that's no by, not by any means a hard stop. It's just a warning. And then you also have this nice little trick here. So if you're ever on the phone with your underwriter and you have two different amounts for your calculation, you can just click this little guy and this will show you exactly what went into that calculation. All right, so the first part here is our note section. And again, I chose to have this at the top. You can choose whatever you want. The note section is just for me. So this isn't seen by the lender. It's just for you and anyone else that you give access to your deal if you want to keep notes on your client. If you want to highlight something, you can press this little pin button here and that will highlight the note for you, which um, I could designate that I want these to be at the top. So again, you customize that order. All right, the next section is our borrowers section. I'm not going to get into too much too many details about uh, the application because most of you probably already know how to fill out an app and it is um, it is pretty intuitive but just point out some things that are maybe different for you and and uh, some improvements as well so this borrower section of course is where we do our basic borrower information um, to add anyone you just click add borrower here and that will uh, pop up to ask their basic info I can switch then here between the first and second borrower um, if I need to change the type. So I want to make the second borrower the primary. I just click on that right there. And uh, as long as my deal is not submitted, then I'm good to go. All right. Um, copy address over so I can copy the address from one borrower to another. So I never have to type it twice. Okay, pretty standard information. Um, it needs the last three years worth of uh, residence and uh, employment. So if I put two years the dwelling status, it will pop up to ask my previous address here. Okay, employment. Um, so any basic employment information. If there's added employment, just click to add. All right, remove borrower is done right here. Other income, so if they have like interest, uh, alimony, child support, that can go just beneath here. And then the next section we're gonna jump into is our assets, liabilities, and properties. So this is where you add in their assets, where you pull credit, and where you put in their existing properties. So assets go up here, just click the green add asset to add them on. And then borrowers, Kate or Prince Middleton. So choose who that asset belongs to, what type is it, um, and the value. And then if you want to allocate part of that to the down payment, you can input that there. 
right, the next part, uh, credit bureaus. So this, as I mentioned, is where you pull the bureau. Just click this orange Get Credit Bureau button. Go ahead, choose how is it authorized. So online and writing email. Um, and put the basic information. Is it single or joint? And then the vendor, you can choose Equifax, or if you're signed up with TransUnion, you can choose TransUnion as well. Um, TransUnion does have quite a different score, so they have a different way of calculating, and oftentimes it can be more forgiving. So it's nice to have that option. And I know with banks like Scotia, they'll always pull a TransUnion if you don't. So um, good idea to to yeah have that available for you. And when you do pick a lender from our mortgage request, which I'll show you in just a minute. And we will tell you if they accept Equifax or TransUnion. Okay, so if you think you know who you're going to send it to, go ahead and pick before you pull the bureau. And then I would just hit Request Bureau. My bureau comes back here. And I can then choose. You can see I've pulled both for Kate. I can choose which one I want to go through with my application to the lender. All right, liabilities is the next part. Um, so I can copy liabilities down from my bureau here. And um, payments like on credit card default to 3%. I can choose if I want to pay off from proceeds or prior to advance. All right, and the next part is my properties owned section. So any properties that are already in their possession. So this will auto copy down from my property I even put at the top in my borrower section but if I have additional properties I just click add property it adds another one here just beneath you can see this one I haven't filled in yet so it will add another line and then you click that line to open that section and go in and put in the basic property details if I select that it's a rental it'll pop up below asking my income and offset and that kind of information All right, uh, condo fees default to 50%. So unless you want it to be 100, don't check that off, which you can see right here, 50%. All right, if there's already a mortgage on this property, I hit this add mortgage button and that's what prompts this mortgage information to pop up and I can input the standard mortgage information. If this is a refinance, I just click this copy to subject property button to copy this down to my next section, which is, of course, the subject property. All right. You definitely want to make sure to hit that button. OK, so here we are. Subject property um, input, basic details. Pretty standard subject property. Again, if it's a rental, it'll ask rental options, offset, that kind of thing. Okay, and my next section is going to be my mortgage request. So this is really where all the mortgage information is done. Our down payment is done a little differently, so you're going to want to pay attention to how I do it now, just in case you're stumbling through it the first time, but it is really easy to do. So to add down payment, I just click add down payment here. It adds an additional line. And then I can just choose my source and input my amount. And input the amount here. Now these will total beneath in my down payment section here. So my down payment here, it's automatically totaled it from above. But you see I can't click here, so I can't adjust this. But what if I want to calculate, uh, say, 20% of this purchase price? All I have to do is click Override. So I override the down payment source above. And then now I can click in here. So I could do, OK, 20%, click Calculate, and that adjusts the amounts for me. Now if I scroll back up, you can see that this is read only. So I can no longer pull from this. It's, it's either or, in which case I need to make sure to select my down payment source from right here. Okay, uh, is it a pre-approval or an approval? First, second, or third mortgage? Mortgage or line of credit? And then what is the purpose? 
if it's insured, I check this off and it'll auto calculate my insurance premium right here, which I can override if I need to by just checking premium override and inputting the amount. Purchase plus improvements. So if I'm going to have renovation, things like that, you can allocate the amount right here. All right. And then just beneath, I do my interest rate, net rate, my type, term type, frequency, amortization, all that information goes in here. And when I'm ready, I click calculate to calculate the monthly payment. Okay, qualifying details, good old stress test goes in here. And again, click calculate to see that amount calculated. All right, payment summary. So this is where I go to get my estimated summary of monthly payments in property taxes, mortgage amount, and I also have a way of getting MPP quotes should they choose to take MPP insurance. A uh, reason why we included this quote portion right up front is because it people tend to have more success when selling MPP when they present it right up front to their clients as opposed to waiting until the end. So we provide you a way to get that quote right from the get-go. All you have to do is click get a quick quote, this button here. And that will bounce me down to the very bottom, which is my insurance section here. From here, it's all auto filled. All I do is just choose, is it for one or both borrower? And then I click again, get a quick quote. Now that quote will populate in two places. It'll populate above in my um, payment summary section, as well as beneath in this response which if I click to open, you'll see it breaks it down by borrower and life insurance versus disability. Okay, then when I'm ready to get my MPP form, I just click generate form and that'll go in my conditions and documents section as well just beneath here in my MPP response, just beneath my quote is my form. So if I open that and scroll down, you'll see the form right here for you, which you can click to open and send to your client. Okay, so that's how you get that MPP quote to populate. I'm gonna go back up to my payment summary. Um, from here, the next part is my lenders. So we do submit to all and more than expert does today. This is our lender list. So go ahead and find your lender. And when you do choose a lender, as I said before, a pop-up notice will come and tell you if they accept Equifax or TransUnion. So in this case, MCAP accepts both. A line of business, A, B, or C, submission product, and the net rate. This discover section, um, this is our auto product match. Very, very cool. I'm gonna cover this in the next video though. So if you're interested in, in uh, finding out about discovery, be, sh be sure to catch the next one. Okay, from there I do lender submission. So choose my agent, submission agent, and then input any submission notes. And when I'm ready, I just click submit to lender. And that would be it. My deal would go through. I'd get a, a number of verification and that number will display in the submission notes below as well as next to the mortgage request. Um, something really important to note is you can submit more than one mortgage request. You don't have to wait any time in between them either. So if I wanted to submit another one, I can just click add mortgage request. It adds another request. So number three here. Just go in and make sure all the details are filled in. And uh, when you're want to, wanting to submit this one, just make sure to change it to the primary. So if I hover, you see make primary, click that star. And then now I could submit this one. Okay, important that it is listed as the primary. 
All right, everything is auto-saving line by line, so you don't ever have to worry about losing your work, which is really, really nice. We don't have those 29-minute timeouts. Um, if you don't believe me, <laughs> we have this little kind of placebo save button. Um, that's just there for people who don't trust us, really. Um, the validate is good, though. So if you're wanting to validate your deal, see what pops up in red. Of course, it will validate when you send it in, when you click to send to lender. But if you're wanting to just do one in advance, then that's a really good way to do it. One other cool thing I want to show you is our deal specific tasks section. From here, you can set tasks. So reminders, basically, um, you can set them for yourself or a colleague. Just click add task. Select what it is, choose the date, and then input what it is, write any details, choose who it's for, or just keep it for yourself, and then you just hit close, and now that task is going to pop up on that date, reminding you to do that, um, showing up in this tasks bar here. All right, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to jump on our next sessions to see Doc Collection, Client Portal, eSign, Easy Account Access, and all the other things that Velocity has to offer. <laughs>